what's up y'all this is the lando show the first actually the first episode of two, the 2022 calendar year some of y'all may have noticed that i've been away for quite some time we're going to talk about that a little bit today uh, of course if you're clicking on this video you probably saw the headline we are talking texas i wanted to transcribe steve sarkeesian's press conference as we wrapped up the 2022 recruiting class a little bit and kind of just talk about the expectations and where we're going moving forward but uh, if it's all right, if I can have a couple minutes of your time before we get to that, I wanted to just be totally candid, just kind of like completely transparent with you guys right now. Something I want to do a little bit more of on this channel, as I mentioned before, I have been kind of away per se uh, from from the content creation uh, just for the last you know month or so. I've kind of just been working on me, man. I've been focusing on some things that. I needed to focus on, and quite frankly, YouTube took a back seat, and I'm okay admitting that. I'm okay talking about it. Uh, I, I I wanted to free myself of some of you know the the old habits that I used to let kind of tie me down or weigh me down, and and start creating new and better ones. And and I'll be open and frank about those too. I mean, one of the things, the biggest thing for me that I've been focusing on is. A, giving more time to God, 15 minutes in the morning and trying to do 15 minutes at night, just whether that be, I got, I got this, I got this daily devotional book for, as a gift, as a gift for Christmas. And that's honestly been a blessing for me, kind of like slowing down a little bit with everything that's happening in my life, you know, asking God, what's my purpose, you know, show me my purpose. What, what, what do you want for me with, with the professional athlete life, the, the YouTube life, and then everything else in between, like my career baby on the way next month. It's been crazy. Right. But I know there's a reason for all this and me trying to juggle all these different things. Right. I realized that being the Jack of all trades makes you the master of none. Right. That's a, that's a kind of a famous quote that everybody knows, but when you do a little bit of self-reflection, self-auditing, you kind of realize that's pretty damn pertinent to what is going on with me right now. And so my favorite quote that I've been trying to abide by, and I've, I've done it, honestly, I've, I'm proud of the, of the progress that I've made. I've been, I've been planning everything out the night before. So like, that's one another thing that I've been focusing on is uh, we talked about number one, giving more time to God, asking him, you know, letting him kind of just handle all the stresses and the uncertainties and the unknowns in my life. Right. Number two, reading more in particular, P putting, you know, putting the phone down, the TV away, you know, keeping the TV off and, and just trying to learn, right? The, another quote that I love is, is the moment you stop learning is the moment you start dying. It's, it's the, the moment you begin to kind of just wither away into your old habits, right? So like, again, I'm freeing myself from the shackles of my old habits, trying to create new and better ones, being more punctual. That's the thing that I'm focusing on, giving more time to God. That's the second thing. And then thirdly, just... Like I, I had to learn how to turn the sports switch off. I, 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 I became so bogged down by, you know, I read this article or hear this, uh, this, this bit or segment on the radio or find a podcast that I love, hear a topic that I, that I don't, you know, that I wanted to, to hit on. And I would try to immediately, it would just go into my mind. I would start thinking of ways that how do I deliver that uh, to my channel and for my audience. And so Ultimately, I had to just figure out how to turn that switch off because I realized that I can't talk about it all. I can't be perfect. I can't, I, I'm, I'm not very tech savvy. I don't really understand all that stuff, right? So um, I am tr going to just try to be the most candid version of me as, as I possibly can, try not to add stuff, you know, at, like shoulder the weight of things that aren't, aren't necessary. So I hope y'all are cool with that. And I appreciate you listening this far if you stuck with me. Um, it's four minutes, 15 seconds already. It's flying by. So there's a, you know, a couple other things that I wanted to talk about a little bit. And like the, the, the quote that I mentioned earlier, there's another one that I've been really, that's stuck with me and that I've been trying to live by is true growth is when you get so sick of your old bullshit that you actually dig deep and, and make changes and, and start to progress away from the old version of yourself. True growth. You get so sick of your own bullshit that you force yourself to make changes. What, regardless of what that means, what that means, you know, like I said, for me, it was, it was, 
it was focusing on my future as opposed to being so caught up in keeping up with all the latest and greatest news and headlines and sports and, you know, got to pump this content out, got to talk about this, got to say that I've, I've been very active on Twitter as well. And that's another thing that, that, that honestly, it kind of weighed me down a little bit. And like I said, I'm okay admitting that I'm okay saying that I'm sure if you're watching this video, you can, you can relate in some capacity, right? Life is, life is so crazy busy. So I'm trying to be more present in the moment, in the moment, being where my feet are, you know, in the present time, but also having enough of the foresight to really like see my goals and how, like no, understand how far I've come and then be diligent enough, be dedicated enough, which hasn't ever been an issue for me, but being okay, grinding out the process and, and starting something like a YouTube channel or like my professional baseball career, seeing it through. I don't want to ever live with regret and, and, and say, you know what, if I would have, if I would have worked a little bit harder this day and, and, and didn't go, uh, didn't go with my friends or, uh, didn't sit down and, and watch this episode of Netflix or, you know, didn't listen to, you know, binge listen to all my favorite, uh, personalities on, on YouTube or, or the radio station, like turn on some worship music every now and then, as opposed to just sports, 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 sports all the time. Right. That type of thing. So, I mentioned I got a baby on the way. That's another thing is, is, is why I, I just want to. The self audit part hit me hard when I was like, you know what? I've been so damn selfish. Just focusing solely on myself. I got a pregnant wife in there that has sacrificed. You know, it's it, it would probably be an overstatement to say that she sacrificed her whole life for me, but that just kind of like puts into perspective, you know, everything that we've overcome together is, uh, is special to me. And I've started to see that now that like where we're at financially now compared to where we were just a year ago. Uh, you know, we just, we bought our second house together. We, I just bought a new car for the first time. It, you know, f the title is in my name. I'm making the car payments on it. Like, you know, I'm running three full-time job or part-time jobs as well as, trying to stay in shape in the weight room. I mentioned being more punctual. I've been packing all my stuff, my breakfast and my lunch, my change of clothes, my towel, uh, you know, my baseball stuff, all that stuff's in my, in my car, ready to go. All I got to do is wake up and throw on my, throw on my clothes. I set it out at night before I go to sleep. Most of the time I've been pretty good, but most of the time, and all I got to do is wake up, brush my teeth, sometimes take a shower, but before I go lift, sometimes I don't, which, you know, it kind of helps wake me up, but that's my routine. So I've, I've, I've been more punctual. I've been reading more. I've been giving more time to God and that's, it's helped. I had the greatest week this week doing, you know, I'm running Instacart. <laughs> that's one of my part-time gigs. I'm delivering groceries to people like, you know, who, what is this, this baseball player doing, you know, like this, it's, it, it feels crazy, but you know, I'm one of these days I'm going to look back and I'm going to say, damn, everything I went through, and, you know, I was, I was, I didn't see what the purpose of the struggle was until I, until I had already kicked that next door down. And now, you know, it's like you look back and you understand that it was all setting you up, you know, it, you slowly, but surely climbing the mountain, right. Overcoming challenges, kicking down doors, you know, struggling, you fall down, you get back up and you keep climbing, right. Like all this stuff, like. Okay, here's here's the totally candid version of Lando. <clears throat> if you heard if you've heard nothing up to this point, and we're gonna get re get get into the into the Texas talk here in just like a minute or two. I am so sick and tired of devoting my life to two things that I know I'm really good at. One of those being being a pitcher, a baseball player. And the other one being try, trying to, you know, bi build my own brand of, of, you know, the Lando show, like building a community of people talking about my two biggest passions outside of what I do for a living, which is my two teams. You can see them in the background right here behind me being so good at those, knowing that, but having nothing to show for it financially. And that, that, that again, it's not about the money, but I want to be able to provide, provide for my family in a way that I don't have to stress about doing the things that I love while also having to do things that I don't love just to make money. 
to, to support my dream and my family at the same time. Does that make sense? Like, I, I hope that that's not confusing, but that's honestly how I feel. You know, I've just, I've grown sick and tired of that. But I also understand that, you know, I've kind of, uh, in, in my head, I'm reaching that breaking point. But I understand that your biggest struggles oftentimes come right before your biggest breakthroughs. And that's something that I've also had to keep telling myself, keep reiterating, you know, and thinking about everything I will, I've overcome. I, I'm 27 years old. I'm the last person I know that I grew up with in my area, DFW, Saginaw, that's still playing, that's still, you know, chasing this dream, regardless of what, whether or not I'm making money. That's a blessing in and of itself to still be able to suit up and to compete. The sport that I grew up loving as a, as a two-year-old kid. When, when they didn't even make t-ball pants small enough to fit me, my mom had me out there on the diamond playing t-ball, you know, like that's, that's, that's me. It's what made me me. So to still be able to do that, let me take a drink for a second. You know, I'm sorry. I've been ranting flow state. Long story short, um, 2022 has been the best it's been. We're only one month in. I, I realize I got 11 more months to go, but the amount of growth I've seen just for myself, I'm very proud of in just these last four to four to five weeks. My wife has even noticed a difference. I've had two people in the grocery store tell me, ask me if I was military just because of the way that, that I, that I carry myself. That's what they said. I said, what, th th what gave it away? Is it the haircut? You know, like, you know, I kind of keep it high and tight, but I said, what, was it the haircut that gave it away or, or, or the, or the hat or, you know, just what was it? And, and this guy told me this was just yesterday. And it was the second time in three days that it happened shopping for groceries at Kroger. He said, nah, man, it's just the way that you carry yourself. <laughs> and like, here I am. I feel like I'm walking around carrying the weight of the world, not only in my chest, but on my shoulders, you know, trying for all the reasons that we've talked about. And yet on the outside, somebody that doesn't even know me gave me this, this random compliment, this total stranger, you know, and that, that was all I needed to, like the, the, I didn't need the validation from somebody that I don't know, but it was like that, you know, that kick in the rear end, just like saying, Hey man, keep going. You're doing, you're doing a good job. You're doing everything you can do. So I'm proud of that, you know? And so here we are, uh, I, I've, I'm looking forward to, like I said, doing more stuff like this. This is how I relate to y'all. This is how uh, the, the community gets built on Twitter at the Lando show. The same thing here. Like I said, I'm trying to become less dependent on my social media networks. Right. But also that's where I thrive. Like that's when I'm, when I'm me the most, just talking about my teams. That's another form of expression that I use that the Twitter is, it's the text version of what I'm talking about right here on YouTube. Okay, so follow me over there. I will follow back. I love engaging, but that's that's the thing, man. Talking about my teams, meeting new people, and just growing a community of like-minded individuals. It's, it's fun. So thank you all for getting this far. Let's talk about Texas, though. Real quick, we'll just run through it. Stark's press conference released on YouTube. That's where I, you know, get like I said, I get most of my information. Um this, the signing class wrapped up with my favorite player in the class, Devon Campbell, DJ Campbell out of Arlington. And, man, so keep, to keeping it short and sweet, it brought together the best offensive line class that I've seen Texas sign since I've been alive that a lot of people will say maybe since, maybe ever, maybe the best, the best offensive line group that Texas has ever assembled. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. I think the last time Texas had a first round draft pick on the offensive line was in 2001. Uh, I know Justin Blaylock, I think, was a second round pick. Connor Williams was a second round pick, but no excuse for that to, to have a 20 year and counting uh, drought of, of the lack of depth or the lack of production on the offensive line. And so that's one of the things that I'm most excited about. You know, we, uh, Texas fans, myself included, kind of like bragged and, and gloated a little bit about our top five classes of in recent years. And one thing, if you do, like, again, just the self audit of the program, I, I keep using that term. It's, that's, that's big for me, but the self audit, you go back and look all the headline names of those top five classes were all at the skill positions, right? There wasn't a single offensive lineman.
that was inside the top 10 in the country at his position, or actually I think even in the state of Texas, not one player on the offensive line uh, since 2015. So all those headline names, right? Skill position guys, corners, receivers, uh, safeties like B.J. Foster, Caden Stearns, Jake Smith, uh, who is obviously not a, a safety, but I'm just naming names now. B. John Robinson was a running back. But all those guys, you know, co college football, the older I get, the more people I talk to and the more research I do and study is it, it, I'm, I'm figuring out that quality plus quantity in the trenches are how teams succeed and how dynasties are built in college football. It, it's 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 very clear to me that that is the formula. And uh, listening to Steve Sarkeesian talk today, that's one of the things that he mentioned uh, was he, he said we've just plain and simple we've got to get bigger. Uh, so they've signed they signed seven offensive linemen in the class. You you guys all are familiar with the names right now. I don't have to go through that. Thirty two new scholarship uh, enrollees uh, for the 2022 class. Fourteen of which will be early enrollees and are already on campus right now which is big time. So uh, I might try to link those names and put them in the comments so you guys can see the, the, the list of the names that he named today, or you could just go back and, and listen to it uh, on, on in his press conference. But those are the guys that are going to have the best chance, in my opinion, to uh, to see playing time early as, as freshmen and to ultimately, you know, kind of get this team back on the right track. But seven offensive linemen, to me, that was the self-audit, again, of, of, a, of a coaching staff that has a plan, realizing that the last two recruiting cycles, 2021, the year before, and then 2020, there was only two linemen, offensive linemen, signed in each of those two classes. 2021 was Hayden Connor and Max Merrill, and 2020 was Jake Majors and Andre Karik. So they realized that there was, there was, there was holes to fill, and there was – a very obvious void of depth on the roster on, within the program at that position. And so to me, it's, it's, it, you ask me, or if I were to ask you guys, how does a team with plenty of skill position talent, right? Build four consecutive double digit leads against top 15 conference opponents in four consecutive weeks and lose all four of those games. The first reason is what we just mentioned, the offensive line depth or the lack thereof, right? And then secondly, and it gets me, it, you know, this is the segue into the second point I'm going to make, is the lack of physicality. So Sarkeesian referenced, again, the size. They wanted to get bigger. They certainly achieved that with Devon Campbell, with Kelvin Banks, with uh, Neto Umiazalu. Sorry, that's a, that's a difficult name to pronounce. Uh, who else am I forgetting? Cam Williams. It's like 350 pounds, I think, already. As a 18 year old uh, senior in high school, uh, Cole, uh, Cole Hudson, Connor Robinson, and I might be forgetting one more. Forgive me if I am, but seven legit, you know, four star and five star players who can come in, compete, and and really catapult the, the the trajectory of this program moving forward. So the second reason, like I just like I just stated is the lack of physicality, and that's – we've heard Steve Sarkeesian reference the strength and conditioning. Today, he kind of provided some clarification on that, and I also heard Eric Nalin from uh, uh, On3, or formerly known as Inside Texas, the, a couple days ago, referenced last year he was kind of perplexed watching the strength and conditioning staff go in and sort of implement their new style, right? Because moving on from, from Yancey McKnight, who was kind of the – the, the compound lift only. Let's see how much weight we can load on the barbell, pick it up and move it, right? Let's, it, was, it was a transition away from that. And also, th they had to kind of like take a step back for a second and teach these guys how to be functional athletes and not just straight line, you know, uh, sagittal plane movement with, with bench pressing and, and, and box squatting and all that stuff. Teaching them how to be more fluid athletes and, 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 address the injury prevention aspect of training. And so it was, it was, you know, a lot of working on the small muscles, a lot of uh, unilateral or isometric movement type stuff, like very lightweight, a lot of one leg stuff, a lot of single arm stuff, uh, getting the smaller muscles to kind of fire around the big ones so that, that, that everything kind of, you know, works together to create the more fluid athletes. And so 
the strength had to had to come down because Torrey Becton had to basically start from scratch and teach these guys how to move better. That's the the simple way to put it. And so Eric Nalin mentioned that, and then and then we heard Steve Sarkeesian uh, kind of in a roundabout way also doubled down on that, saying, you know what, look, like that the strength was an issue for us this year, and that's that's part of the part of the problem. And so that now they're doing they're they've got that that functional strength basis already. So like that was that was that was layer number one. And now this year they're applying all the the more you know loading the bar up powerlifting style of football player lifts, right? Let's see how strong we can be. They're 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 starting to stack that on now slowly but surely. So kind of teaching teaching proper movement first and then adding the strength component on top of it. This is a this is a multi year process that that we're already in the middle of in the midst of. It's year two now. So, uh, to me, that's why you kind of get whittled away in the second half against top 15 teams in the, in the country when you're obviously going step for step and athlete for athlete with them in the first half building double digit leads, but you can't sustain those leads because you don't have the strength and the size to, you know, just to kind of not wear down in the second half of ball games. Uh, and so, all those things, you know, there's a lot of other stuff that I want to talk about. I'm going to cut this video short. We're already at 21 minutes. I kind of went on a, on a tangent there early on, but that's, that's, that's really all I wanted to hit on. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped to see them finally addressing what has been in, in undoubtedly the biggest hole on this, on this program. And what I have now come to understand has ultimately been handicapping this program for the last, you know, eight to 10 years or so. And so to be able to reel in, two five-star players on the offensive line from in-state and then a bunch of other guys with really, really high ceilings that were just kind of men amongst boys at the high school level is, is encouraging to me to see them address. You know, we almost doubled in one year the amount of offensive scholarship linemen that we've brought on than we did the previous two recruiting classes. And so, you know, ha having, having Kyle Flood here uh, again – in year two alongside Steve Sarkeesian, who's a national championship or a national champion head coach, Kyle Flood, national champion offensive co or uh, offensive line coach, Jeff Banks, national champion, you know, <laughs> tight ends and special teams coordinator, right? All that stuff, it matters. And then and getting Gary Patterson with 20 years of head coaching experience, taking TCU from ground zero to almost the pinnacle and reaching the college football playoff. Uh, it's, it's exciting to see that continuity, you know, uh, that's, that's how, that's how culture is instilled and how programs are built. And I think we've finally got the guys with the resume and the track record of not only bringing in recruits at a high level, but turning, you know, the three-star caliber guys like Pete Kwiatkowski into first and second round draft picks, Kyle Flood turning, turning, you know, guys from non-power five schools and, and into, you know, first round draft picks and, and first team all Americans. There's a, there's a track record there. And so this staff is definitely, uh, it's definitely, they're definitely capable. So that's all I got today. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, leave in the comments what you want to hear me talk about next. If you've, uh, if you've enjoyed this, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button as well. It really helps me out. And uh, I appreciate y'all tuning in. Peace and love as always guys. Welcome.